her family. She and her husband were expecting their third child Sunday. Someone ended those plans three weeks ago, killing Jenna and her unborn son in Raleigh. The killer is still out there, but family members hope not for long. Colin Browder is in Raleigh right now with more on what the family plans to do this weekend. Colin. Then they'll be gathering here at Carolina Pines Park, and they'll be handing out thousands of these flyers, both in English and in Spanish, highlighting that $10,000 reward. They'll be fanning out all along Lake Wheeler Road near where this murder happened. Jenna's family has really been using the media, both local and national, to try and push the story beyond Lake Wheeler Road because they worry this killer could be anywhere. Jenna Nielsen's family won't stop. Three weeks after the pregnant woman was murdered delivering newspapers, her loved ones won't stop thinking about her. There's times during the day that you may see something that reminds you of her. And it takes you right back. And they won't stop trying to find her killer. The person killed my wife, killed my son. That is, that's personal. She was so bubbly. They've held news conferences, gone on national television. Jenna's case and the composite of the man Raleigh police want to talk with have been featured in USA Today, the newspaper she delivered. <laughs> NC Wanted, a crime-fighting show on Fox 50, profiled the case. This weekend, America's Most Wanted will detail the tragedy. You never know. Somebody out there might see this individual that's in question right now. So far, clues are few. A bloody knife was found tossed over a fence not far from the crime scene. Do you have a concern we're talking about a transient who might be long gone right yeah, now? Yeah, I have concerns because it's been three weeks. Raleigh police tell us the attention on the case generates leads from across the country almost daily. So far, they're not sharing what, if anything, they learn. They're not going to tell us anything to jeopardize the case, and I respect that. Information and a two-year-old unsolved murder in Raleigh. Jenna Nielsen was eight months pregnant when someone attacked her as she worked an early morning shift. She was delivering newspapers to a convenience store near the state farmer's market. Until today, it seems the case had run cold. Amanda Lamb is live with the evidence police now say they have. Amanda. Pam, Raleigh police now say they have DNA evidence they believe is from the killer that could help them solve this crime. Jenna Nielsen was found dead behind this convenience store two years ago. And because the technology has improved so much, anything police pick up at a crime scene, plastic, paper, a cigarette lamp, a water bottle, can be tested for DNA. On the two-year anniversary of her murder, Jenna Nielsen's family shared this picture of her to show what she looked like eight months pregnant. There's no way that somebody didn't know that she was pregnant. Nielsen's father, Kevin Blaine, admits there are still a lot of dark nights as he waits for a break in the case. And I never thought it would take, you know, this long to catch the guy. But Blaine has new hope. Raleigh police have revealed they have DNA evidence from the killer. Right now, in today's day and age, DNA is uh, a vital key to putting somebody behind bars. Uh, I mean, it gives you an absolute perfect match. Nielsen, a USA Today newspaper carrier, was found dead from a knife wound behind a convenience store on Lake Wheeler Road in June 2007. This case has never been a cold case to us. The case has been worked daily. Raleigh police say they are constantly comparing the killer's DNA to the state and national DNA databases. Well, obviously, anytime you have DNA, um, it pinpoints a person. It's able to focus in on one person. So we're very happy to have some DNA in this case. Now we just need a suspect to go with that. Blaine believes it's only a matter of time before the case is solved. Really, I'm just waiting for a phone call from the police saying that they have him in custody. Uh, and it'll be a day of celebration, of course, for my family. Raleigh police still have an active tips hotline. You can learn more about that by going to WREL.com. They're looking for any information that might help them solve this case. The North Carolina DNA database has 170,000 samples in it, and it is growing every day, Pam. Amanda Lamb, live in Raleigh. Thank you, Amanda. All right, guys. Here is just a, Justice for Jenna's uh, website, and um, I did... Uh, see on here that um 
like it's got a photo gallery of different pictures you can look at and um, the news coverage and the different links that you're able to find um, information in regards to uh, Jenna. Um, but it, this was not very far from Chris Watts School. Um, and Armchair Detective did a video uh, yesterday in regards to possibly linking Chris Watts up with the murder of Jenna. And I guess in the sketch, um, there is a male, which I kind of thought at first when I saw the, the sketch that it looked female. But anyways, um, it has a ponytail um, on the back of the guy's head. And since there was DNA evidence there, I'm assuming that the police know that it was male. And um, I think it would just be a matter of time, if Chris Watts was involved in this, that we will find out if he was involved and justice for Jenna will be done. Um, thank the Lord for this DNA uh, testing that we're able to do nowadays. Um, so these men can't get away with these horrific crimes. Now, if Chris Watts it ends up being found guilty of this, it like leads you to start thinking how many more could be possible. So anyways, um, I'm not gonna go too deep into the case. Um, Armchair Detective does a great job on it, but is what I'm going to do is I am going to try and reach out to Spirit or try to reach out to Jenna to try and maybe get some answers and see if Chris Watts is the suspect that they're looking for. And I wanted to say, I mean, how ironic this young lady looks so similar to Shannon. She was uh, pregnant with her third baby boy and she was married. I mean, the cases just kind of seem eerily similar. So, um, anyways, yeah, I'm going to try and meditate a little bit on this. Um, I was thinking about her a lot last night and just see if we can get any answers in regards to this. But since there is DNA evidence, I think now that Chris is our, in jail for the murderers of his wife and his children, that um, it would take no time at all to be able to find out if it is him. And I just hope and pray for this family that they get these answers that they need. Last, I did want to say um, something that um, I have not heard in regards to the case, but just want to put this out there in case someone does hear this that did know Chris Watts around the time. Investigators spent about 12 hours there searching for clues at the convenience store and the adjoining Subway restaurant. And in the five vehicles they searched were uh, including a Burgundy Chevrolet Silvernado, a green Ford Explorer, and then uh, Jenna's car was there, and a beige Honda Civic. So um, I thought that that was kind of maybe something that's important to mention in here. So with that being said, I'm going to put up some pictures of the sketch and then a picture of Chris Watts with a ponytail. And it just would not surprise me if he had done something like this before. So here's the pictures, guys. All right, guys, here's the sketch. All right, and here is Chris Watts' wedding picture to Shane Ann Watts. And there's the ponytail, guys. Oh. 